Judgment in the matter of DCM Optical Holdings against Commissioners for His Majesty's Revenue and Customs. This appeal is concerned with two questions about the administration by His Majesty's Commissioners of Revenue and Customs, whom I'll describe as HMRC, of the value-added tax system. The collection of VAT is achieved largely through self-assessment. VAT, as is well known, is a tax on the supplies which a taxable person makes to other persons. The tax is uh, referred to as the taxable person's output tax. The taxable person generally incurs costs through the purchase of goods and services to enable it to make those supplies to others. The taxable person is entitled to deduct from its output tax the VAT which it has paid in making those purchases, and that VAT which it has paid is known as input tax. Where a taxable person has incurred input tax and has no output tax to pay, or where its input tax exceeds its output tax, it is entitled to claim payment from HMRC of the excess input tax, which is known as a VAT credit. The appellants, DCM Optical Holdings Limited, which trade as Optical Express, were a partially exempt person because they made certain supplies on which VAT is charged, such as their sales of spectacle frames and lenses, and they also made supplies which are exempt from VAT, namely their dispensing services. The VAT Act 1994 in section 19 subsection 4 required that the price which they received for their goods and services be apportioned between the taxable and exempt elements. The appellants were not able to agree with HMRC the appropriate apportionment, did not adopt the method which HMRC required them to use and failed to inform HMRC of their failure to do so. Disputes arose as to the correct amount of output tax which was due to HMRC and as to the appellant's entitlement to VAT credits. HMRC made an assessment in October 2005, shortly after first receiving sight of DCM's VAT records. HMRC also over a number of years declined to pay to DCM VAT credits which DCM claimed while they made inquiries to verify those claims. HMRC eventually refused to pay the claims or decided to pay sums which were significantly lower from that which DCM had claimed. DCM challenged both the October 2005 assessment and those decisions on its claims for VAT credits. Various issues were raised in DCM's appeal to the First Tier Tribunal and before the Upper Tribunal. The appeal went to the Inner House of the Court of Session in Scotland, who decided against the company. DCM now appeals to this court. There are two separate grounds of appeal. The first relates to the question of the time, of time bar, by which time limits are imposed on HMRC for making a tax assessment. <coughs> the other concerns the question whether HMRC has the power, A, to refuse to accept a taxable person's self-assessment of its entitlement to a VAT credit while they verify the claim, and B, to decide at a later date that they're only prepared to pay a lower amount. In the judgment which the court hands down today, the court addresses these grounds. The first ground of appeal concerns the interpretation of section 73.3 of the VAT Act, which provides two time limits on HMRC's entitlement to make an assessment when faced with an incomplete or incorrect VAT return. The limits are the later of first two years after the end of the relevant accounting period, and secondly, the limit which is relevant in this appeal, one year after evidence of facts comes to HMRC's knowledge, which is, in HMRC's opinion, sufficient to justify making the assessment. I emphasize the definite article, the assessment. DCM argues that HMRC knew something was wrong with their self-assessments by January 2004 and that HMRC had failed to make an assessment within a year after that and as a result were out of time by the time they made their assessment in October 2005. 
This court rejects that argument, which is contradicted by the authoritative judgments of Mr. Justice Dyson and the Court of Appeal in Pegasus Birds Limited and Commissioners of Customs and Excise in 1999. For the relevant time limit to apply, the revenue must have obtained evidence of facts which are sufficient in their opinion to justify the making of the particular assessment, that is, the assessment which they in fact made. It involves actual and not constructive knowledge, and the one-year period runs from the time when the facts which constitute that evidence came to the knowledge of HMRC, that is, when the last piece of the puzzle was ascertained. The possibility or fact that HMRC could have made a different estimated assessment at an earlier date is beside the point. The second ground of appeal involves DCM's argument that HMRC must pay the sum claimed as a VAT credit and use a statutory power to protect themselves from the possibility that the claim is not justified for example, by requiring uh, repayment in future. The appellant does not dispute that HMRC have a power and a duty to verify the claim, but submits that they have no power to refuse to pay the claim while they verify it. The court rejects that argument. Agreeing with the tribunals and the inner house, this court holds that HMRC have an implied statutory power to refuse to accept that the sum which the tax pay, taxable person claims as a VAT credit is due to be paid, and that HMRC can refuse to, play, to pay that claim while, make, while taking a reasonable time to verify it. This is not inconsistent with fiscal neutrality. It does not involve, un involve unjustified discrimination between payment traders, i.e. those who pay a net sum to the revenue, and repayment traders, i.e. those who routinely, routinely claim VAT credits from the revenue. Nor does it leave the taxable person without a remedy. The taxable person can use public law remedies through judicial review if, for example, HMRC are guilty of inordinate delay in verifying the claim. And the taxable person also has a statutory appeal against an adverse decision. The court therefore unanimously dismisses DCM's appeal.